everybody. Welcome to Thailand Tea Conference and welcome to the uh, video conference. It's the joint program organized by the University of Oregon American English Institute and Media Services and the U.S. Embassy in Bangkok and Thai Tea Soul. And of course, the, the one who initiates this uh, distance learning, the Royal Thai Distance Learning Program uh, Foundation. So welcome you all to our program today. This is the third program of a 10-part uh, series. And the topic for today is uh, critical thinking, how the teachers can develop critical thinking in the ESL classroom. So, um, yeah. I would like to introduce first here um, uh, Kun Richard Boyum, the regional language officer from the American Embassy Bangkok. And myself, Narapon Janosha, past president of Thai TISO and also from Chua University Language Institute. Um, also from uh, TOT Bangkok, we have Dr. Manisa Pia Singh. And from the Hua Hin Sai uh, Krai Kangwon School, we have uh, Dr. Sorda Duk from Distance Learning Foundation. And of course, our presenters today, they are at the University of Oregon in the United States. Uh, Leslie Ock uh, Beckman, who is a media specialist. And our lecturer today is uh, Professor Cynthia Kaifer. Welcome both of you to the presentation today, the video conference presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Are, are we ready to begin? Yep, go ahead. Okay, good. All right. Well, welcome to the third in a 10 part lecture series from the University of Oregon. We're very happy to be back with you here tonight, and we want to thank the U.S. Embassy and the Royal Thai Distance Learning Foundation and everyone at TOT for helping make this possible. The first two sessions, we had guest speakers that talked to us about the five, some five innovative principles of language learning, and we worked a little bit last time with some group processes and managing large groups in the language classroom. We have with us here today Ms. Cynthia Kiefer from the American English Institute, and she's an online distance instructor and a face-to-face -face instructor on the topic of critical thinking skills in the language classroom. So she's going to walk us through some of the research and some of the topics and guide us through some activities today. Before we get started, um, I always like to check in and find out if anyone did any of the strictly optional but nonetheless interesting homework. I hear we might have some homework samples. Yes. Uh, we have a homework from uh, Ajahn Dalat and Ajahn Pranpit from the Konsawan School, the Konsawan. Okay, and we would Very like nice. to ask. Yes, and we would like to ask them to talk a little bit, you know, uh, about their homework, please. Uh, I'm Dalat from North Hansman School, and since last time that we uh, joined the video conference in uh, last year, and uh, we have, Pernit and I, we work together, and we have got lots of ideas for the classroom management. Last time we talked about uh, managing the last classes, and uh, we both, we work in the, the same secondary school in Thailand, and uh, we plan in uh, that school workshop that we have planned for uh, uh, the project. And uh, last Tuesday, uh, our uh, students have done for uh, uh, project work. They are about, uh -huh. yes, that my school. And they are about uh, 100 students together that we work and they present 
Uh, the theme of the project work is uh, Save the World. And uh, I teach in more, more one, like the seventh grade, and uh, she teaches in more four, the tenth grade. And we work together, like uh, do the activity together. And it's, we think that it's, it's, yeah, it's very nice. And uh, thank you for the idea that we got from you, Leslie. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, it much. sounds like it was a lot of your wonderful ideas. Thank you for sharing those with us. Save the world and 100 students in a, a group project. I, I look forward to receiving maybe a copy of it or some images from it. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, then I guess we'll move on with our primary topic today, and I'm going to turn it over to Cindy. Okay. <clears throat> it's nice to be here this evening and talk with you about the topic of critical thinking and its place in the English language classroom. Um, first, we'd like to go over the um, outline of what we will be talking about tonight. Um, first, uh, we will give an overview of critical thinking, what it is, and why it's important to include it in our classrooms. and. Also, we will talk a little bit about what the research shows. And then after that, we would like to um, have an activity in which you apply some of the principles to a textbook analysis. And then we would um, also have a second activity, and we'll wrap it up with some questions and answers. Let's just pause just for a moment. How is the sound on your side? Are you able to hear us OK? Yes. Crystal clear. Okay, great. Yeah, we have a lovely connection. Again, thank you to TOT for that tonight. So the first um, point or topic that we would like to discuss tonight is why um, center or why focus on critical thinking in the language classroom. And we know that in education in the past, um, teachers have focused on or an importance was placed on students learning, learning a, a lot of knowledge. Um, and specific knowledge was very important. But in the last decade or so, educators have been pushing or advocating that we, because of the information age or because of the technological age, that we need to prepare our students more for the rapidly changing world. In other words, we need to um, equip our students with higher order, order thinking skills so that they can deal with and process the information. We need to um, give our students the ability to continue lifelong learning and um, the skills to process the information from multiple sources, to analyze the information, to recognize assumptions, to question and to synthesize information, to evaluate um, their own arguments and to evaluate inferences and other people's and others' arguments and um, conclusions. The uh, most important, though, I think, is that it's important for us as educators to help our students develop their critical thinking skills so that they become responsible citizens for our future and also for their own employability in the future. Because the world is changing so quickly, they need these critical thinking or higher order thinking skills so that they can adapt to a wide range of jobs. In the literature, there are many definitions and discussions among critical thinking specialists as to what critical thinking actually is. And I'm not going to quibble about which definition is the best definition, but um, these are the general premises of what critical thinking or higher order thinking is. It, it means for someone to be a reflective and um, demonstrate reasonable thinking focused on what they believe or what they want to do. And it requires that the person provide evidence to support one's conclusions or one's ideas, and not just simply to sit back and accept other people's um, ideas and opinions, but to request evidence from them, too, before accepting conclusions and following through on them. In the process of 
critical thinking. It's important that the person determine or look at the information and determine if the source is authentic, if it's accurate, and if the information is valid, if it is worth the if it does what it claims and it's based on sound reasoning. But most importantly, I think that not only is critical thinking a good skill to improve the mental process, but also of crucial important importance is that you have a critical spirit, that you uh, think critically about all aspects of life, um, not only about, but also to think critically about your own thinking and to act about on it um, on the basis of what you are considered using your critical thinking skills. In other words, it's not enough just to have the skills, but you also have to um, act upon the skills or act upon the thoughts that you have um, processed. There's a few um, points that I'd like to point out or um, review uh, what the research shows. Um, first, <coughs> the research shows that young people today, at least most young people in the United States, don't show a high level of critical thinking skills. In other words, when given tests to measure um, their thinking ability, it, it indicates that they are not very good at recognizing assumptions, evaluating arguments, or evaluating inferences. And in the past, uh, it was thought that people did not or could not be taught critical thinking or higher order thinking skills. It was assumed that people were born with this natural tendency or natural ability to think critically or to think deeply. When in fact, research has shown that critical thinking skills, skills can be taught and um, taught through instruction and through practice for the students. So teach, training teachers to teach critical thinking skills also um, leads to student achievement gains um, and academic achievement. In addition, um, there are a variety of instructional approaches, techniques, and strategies that can be used and methodologies that can be used to enforce or develop critical thinking skills. So one approach uh, one um, technique or one strategy has not been proven in the research to be better than another. And in fact, a combination or a blending of um, approaches and techniques and strategies may be the best approach because you have many students with different learning styles and aptitudes and abilities. So there is not one approach or instructional technique that is focused on in the research. Another point that we can, be, can be found in the research is that critical thinking does not have to be taught as a separate course or a separate discipline, and that in fact it can be taught inside a content course, or in this case inside a language course. It can, in other words, it can be infused into the curriculum. And one of the advantages of infusing it or having it as part of your curriculum is that it gives the student more opportunities to um, practice or um, process the, or learn the processes of critical thinking so that they become more adapt to it. And one more point I would like to make that the research shows is that as in most educational settings, and most of us know this, that any success, any teaching success, and, and also success of critical thinking instruction depends upon the quality of teaching. It also depends upon the administrative support that the teachers have and the appropriateness of the program for the student population. And the classroom climate is also very important to foster critical thinking. So in other words, at the heart of any critical thinking curriculum or at the heart of any course or class that hopes to foster critical thinking skills, at the heart of it is the student-teacher rela relationship, and that is very important for creating an environment in which critical thinking skills can be developed. Maybe, um, maybe we'll just pause here. Richard, one of the things I didn't check in with you and Kun Nadaporn on is whether or not you'd like us to do pauses so you can do recapping on your end tonight. That would be fine.
Narapon? Yeah. Um, I, since, you know, these programs broad broadcast uh, to 5,000 schools in Thailand, so I would like to give a brief, uh, uh, I mean, a sum up of, what, of the lecture for a moment. Um, Professor, Professor Cynthia, นะคะได้กล่าวถึงเหตุผลว่าทำไมถึงจะต้องเอ่อ critical thinking skill ถึงจะสำคัญก็เนื่องจากว่ามันเป็นทักษะในการที่จะ process information การที่จะเนื่องจากว่าข้อมูลที่เราที่เราจะให้เด็กเนี่ยนะคะเด็กจะได้รับจากข้อมูลจริงๆแล้วไม่ใช่ชิ้นเดียวจากครูแต่ว่าจากหลากหลายข้อมูลหลากหลายแหล่งได้เขาก็สามารถที่จะถ้าได้ข้อมูลจากหลายแหล่งเขาก็สามารถที่จะมีทักษะพัฒนาทักษะที่จะวิเคราะห์ข้อมูลนั้นว่าเหมาะสมไหมนะคะแล้วก็เอามาสังเคราะห์แล้วก็ประเมินได้นะคะแล้วก็ส่วนคําจํากัดความของของ critical thinking skills เนี่ยนะคะก็คือว่าหมายถึงว่าการที่จะคิดอย่างมีเหตุผลนะคะการหาเหตุผลก่อนที่จะรับข้อมูลอะไรก็ตามเข้ามานะคะจากครูเนี่ยปกติเด็กก็จะรับแบบปูนฟีดิ้งใช่ไหมคะแต่ว่าถ้าเขาพัฒนาทักษะ critical thinking skill เนี่ยเขาก็จะรับข้อมูลโดยยังมีเหตุผลเลือกที่จะรับแล้วก็ก่อนรับก็คิดหาเหตุผลให้เหมาะสมนะคะตัดสินว่าข้อมูลนี้สมเหตุสมผลไหมแล้วก็ได้เขาได้พัฒนา mental process นะคะคือพัฒนาสมองของเขาในการที่จะใช้คิดใช้มีการสะท้อนนะคะคิดถึงวิเคราะห์อะไรต่ออะไรอย่างนี้แทนที่จะรับเฉยเฉยอย่างเดียวแล้วก็อาจารย์ซินเดียก็ได้พูดถึงงานวิจัยนะคะงานวิจัยหลายๆชิ้นที่บอกว่าจริงๆแล้วเนี่ยโดยเฉพาะอย่างที่อเมริกาเนี่ยก็พบว่าเด็กสมัยนี้นะคะคิดว่าเมืองไทยด้วยแหละนะคะไม่สามารถที่จะวิเคราะห์ข้อมูลได้นะคะคือรับอย่างเดียวนะคะไม่สามารถที่จะวิเคราะห์ข้อมูลว่าประเมินข้อมูลอะไรได้แต่จริงๆแล้วเนี่ยเราไม่ควรจะคิดว่าเด็กเนี่ยจะต้องเป็นเด็กคิฟเจอที่จะมีสกิลนี้มากับตัวแต่จริงๆเป็นสกิลที่เราพัฒนาให้เด็กได้สอนให้เด็กได้นะคะแล้วก็ในขณะเดียวกันอาจารย์ก็บอกว่า critical thinking skill เนี่ยจะบูรณาการเข้าไปในหลักสูตรได้ทุกหลักสูตรเลยนะคะไม่ใช่เฉพาะภาษาอังกฤษเท่านั้นนะคะไม่ใช่เป็นสกิลที่จะต้องสอนแยกเดียวๆแล้วก็ความสําเร็จของการที่เราจะพัฒนา critical thinking skill ให้กับเด็กเนี่ยก็ขึ้นอยู่กับอาจารย์บอกว่า quality teaching นะคะคือการสอนที่มีคุณภาพนะคะทำอย่างไรเราถึงจะบูรณาการทักษะอันนี้เข้าไปในการสอนของเราได้แล้วก็อีกอย่างหนึ่งคือ Uh, classroom climate นะค,ะคือบรรยากาศในห้องเรียนว่าเราจะส่งเสริมทำกิจกรรมส่งเสริมอย่างไรค่ะขอแค่นี้ก่อนนะคะโอเค back to you Leslie and Cynthia thank you Okay, thank you. Well, we certainly have a nice demonstration here tonight of higher order thinking skills with um, Kunara Porn simultaneously translating and um, inferencing back and forth between Thai and English. Thank you. So, Cindy, if I were going to recap what you just said just to understand a bit myself. Um, th this notion of critical thinking is, it's, it's new, this idea of infusing it into the curriculum. And it's new not only to EFL, but here in the United States. Is that, is that right? Well, it's new in the sense it's been mostly um, discussed and implemented in classrooms since the 1990s. Okay. So there are numerous programs and educational schools that um, have been in process now for 10 or 10 to 15 years so there's been a number of um, research projects that have been done to see if critical thinking skills can be taught okay from the elementary level through college okay so it's relatively new in the scheme of education but not so new that we don't know anything about it we do know that it, it works yes, yeah. yes okay yes. good all right okay moving on in the um, research, there is also there are many instructional models um, for teachers to use to determine or to identify how to teach uh, critical thinking skills. Um, the, one of the most common ones that you may come across is Bloom's Taxonomy, which is a model that was developed by a group of educators headed by Benjamin Bloom in the 1950s. And in fact, I think this model 
came out about 1958. Mm -hmm. So other people have developed similar models. This one happens to deal with the cognitive domain. He also has um, taxonomies for the affective domain and the psychomotor domain. The affective domain is also an important one to pay attention to because it deals with students' metacognition skills. In other words, they're they learn the skill of thinking about their own thinking and evaluating, evaluating their own thinking. And that also that goes hand in hand with the cognitive um, aspect of critical thinking. In Bloom's taxonomy, we can see that he has six levels of um, thinking, and they go from the concrete of knowledge to the very abstract level of evaluation. The last three, analysis, synthesis, and evaluation, are considered the higher order thinking skills. In most educational settings, textbooks, and classroom instructional materials, the focus seems to be most of the time on the first three levels of the taxonomy, which are knowledge, comprehension, and application. OK, okay good. So we're going to be looking at some examples of texts that we received from Thailand tonight. Uh, we checked in with Kun Sorada, and she indicated that um, a, a small number of people in the Huahin site are familiar with the particular text, but will also be providing an alternative means of participating in the activity, even if you don't have the text. Yes. Okay. So do you want to give them time to yeah. discuss this before? Uh, Nadaporn, would you like to do a brief recap at this point before we move into the activity? Yes. Yes, thank you. Bloom's taxonomy. Knowledge, comprehension, and application. Yang may long by Naradap. Advanced to life. A Janka Bokwa, a Ganti, Jai, 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 me, Tapsa, and Nina, go, Unja Dong, do they take it a gum, do it a car teacher come, Jai, Jai, Tapsa, long by two, a synthesis evaluation. Okay. Is it okay to move on? Yes, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Sorry. All right. Um, I'd like to remind the viewing audience that the detailed readings about Bloom's taxonomy and other, some of these other, what's the word I'm looking for? Some of these other readings. Readings. Well, <laughs> just, not just the readings, but these other research theories are available on the website. And, and I'd also like to mention that um, we've modified the program so much when we were putting this presentation together, we realized that Cindy had a lot, a lot more information than we could share in, in one session. So we're actually going to do two sessions. So if you're feeling like you're, you'd like a little bit more information, you'd like to spend more time on the readings, you can definitely do that between now and the February video conference. And we'll have Cindy coming back to talk to us about some more concrete applications of critical thinking in the classroom as well. But for now, we're ready to move on to the first activity. And as we have done in the last two presentations, we're going to ask our two main sites to get into groups. So we'll be asking you to do this activity in groups of four or five, uh, whatever size seems reasonable. Is that okay with you, facilitators? Manisa, Kun Manisa, Kun Sorada? Yes, fine. Yes. Group work? Right. Okay, so we'll give the instructions and then we'll, we'll get folks, can you help us get folks moved into groups? Yes. Yes. Yes is yes. good. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right. So, what are we going to do here? Okay, so the textbook that, or the copy that was sent to us, or the chapter that was sent to us, came from the text, Speed Up to the World Outside. Let's show their hands. How many, people, um, How many people know this text? Could you please raise your hand? Are familiar with this text? Speed up to the world outside. Yeah, raise your hand. Speed up to the world outside. It's intermediate level. 
<laughs> okay. Okay. It's a book that, we understand it's a book that's being used in Thailand. I see English and Thai in the front of it by Susan Abbey. No, Axby, excuse me. How about the Huahin site? Can we see the Huahin site? Right. Textbook speed up to the world outside. Okay, We've got one here at the Queen's Park. How about the other sites? How about can we we can only see the one we can only see the hotel. Can we see the other sites and see a show of hands? This will help us decide how to proceed with the activity. We only have one in uh, Bangkok in uh, Queens Park Hotel. Okay. What about t what about um, thank you? What about Hua Hin? How many people know the book Hua Hin? Can you raise uh, your hands? Can you see us? We have about three teachers who yeah, use this book. Les, so. can you see us? Okay. All right, let's ask another question. How many people teach reading in your classes? Raise your hand if you teach reading. reading. Raise your hand tall if you, read, if you teach reading. Reading? Reading? Raise your hand. All the participants here in Bangkok. Okay, now I'm seeing lots of hands. Reading. Okay, everybody teaches reading, so we have that in common. How many people teach readings or use for content Famous people or biographies could be famous sports people, famous authors, famous political figures. Raise your hand if you use famous people. All reading, anybody? In your in your class in your class units. Oh, I see lots of hands. Okay, good. Okay. Okay, so this is what we're going to use for our, both our first and our second activity. It's this idea of incorporating reading in your classroom. Um, the content is centered around a famous person or a biography. In the particular book, the Speed Up to the World Outside, the, the name of the person was, it was a man, yes. and his name was uh, Miguel Angel Corzo. But in your group work, you can choose a different famous person. So as Cindy is talking to you about the activity, be thinking in the back of your mind of a possible famous person for your group work, okay? Nod your heads. Show me that you, you're you okay. Okay. All right, Cindy, what are we going to do? Talk to us about this reading exercise. Okay, before we go too far into the reading exercise, I'd like to just give an overview of the language focus for this unit, unit one in this text, Speed Up to the World. And in that text, they're focusing on um, the grammar, which is present simple, when you're dealing with present simple for facts, habits, general truth, um, present continuous for temporary situations or current conditions, and also they focus on passive voice in the present and simple past. In the text, they have that grammar is embedded in reading activities. One of the reading activities is a recipe. There's also an informal letter. I think it's from a grandmother. Um, a guidebook um, and a magazine article. So the article about this famous person is actually portrayed as a magazine article. There are also listening activities in this unit um, where a, music um, a musician talks about the music he likes and a, desi a designer describes the company that he works for and his work. So the communication focus of this activity or this unit is on the student practicing giving instruction, describing procedures, talking about his likes and dislikes, and in this case, like the biography, giving personal information about um, the background and um, his, his or hers own life. And on the overhead, you can see that the questions for the reading about this person's life or the biography are on the knowledge base level. They ask questions about fact, factual questions like where did he study and how, um, where did he work, 
uh, what kind of jobs did he have and what did he accomplish. And also it has a few language activities, for example, how many time words can you find in the reading. So the students are asked to pull out or identify the facts or to identify particular vocabulary words. So today... Yeah, this, this all seems pretty familiar. This should seem, if you're, if you're teaching reading, if sometimes in your readings or in your content you're working with the idea of a famous person or a biography or personal information, these kinds of fact-finding questions, I think they're pretty universal to all of us who work in, in the classroom. So what, for teachers, what we want to do today is look at the, one of the things we can do is look at our textbooks and analyze our textbooks and see what we are asking the students to do. And also we can start to incorporate activities and exercises that will elicit higher order thinking skills from the students. So today first we're going to look at um, the knowledge level and the comprehension level and um, do our first task which is? Yeah, so for, we're not going to really start with higher order critical thinking skills yet. We're no. just going to start with laying a foundation. So think about your book, mm -hmm. whatever book it is you teach with. Think about a famous person that maybe you use in your class sometimes, a biography or it could be a sports figure, could be a famous singer, right. a, a popular politician, mm -hmm. or if politicians are popular, yes. Um, so we're going to ask you to get into groups, think about your book, think about a person or a biography that you use in your classes sometimes, and we want you to come up with not critical thinking questions yet, some of these knowledge or comprehension kinds of questions, these fact-finding questions. Is that right? Yes, we just want to deal with the first two levels of the taxonomy right now, and then during the second task we will try formulating questions at the higher level of the taxonomy. So this kind of thing takes practice. It takes lots of practice and it's a really good idea for people to collaborate and work together and so that's what we're practicing today. Okay, so let's turn it over to Kun Naraporn and ask her to recap this and I think we'll give you a good five minutes to go through this. Did, did we lose Kun Naraporn and, and Kun Richard? I can't see them. Okay, in this case, uh, Kun Manisa and Kun Sorada, would you do a brief recap for your audience and put them into groups and begin the activity, please, now? Okay, we we'll proceed. Okay, thank you. We had a disconnect, but uh, we're back. Can you hear us? Good. Um, we had asked... Uh, we were we asked the facilitators to do a recap and put their their uh, participants into groups and so they are yep. proceeding with the activity now how are you doing we, on the hotel site same same we've got groups they're doing information excellent. and comprehension questions on a famous person of their choice Is that excellent right? excellent okay good yes. at, at, at the end of the activity we'll check in with the facilitators and ask them to report out on one or one of the groups and give us some examples of their work okay thank you uh, Leslie uh, Sorada can you hear me yes I just like to remind um, all the remote sites that don't have cameras, they should be forming small groups and doing the same activity, right? Absolutely, we hope they are. We've, we've had some reports by email from some highly qualified uh, facilitators up in northeastern Thailand and southern Thailand who are bringing groups together and following right along beside us. And so I, I'm sorry that we're not able to talk to them and we welcome their reports afterwards. And so. Please do as Richard suggests. Uh, this is this kind of activity is is challenging. We'll, we'll give people a time to work uh, through it and get Leslie, a good foundation uh, Sarada, set here. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I just like to remind um, 
All the remote okay, sites. Okay, let's take about two more minutes. They don't have cameras. And we're going to ask um, a group from each one of the sites small to groups give us and doing an the same activity. Your right? figure and Absolutely. your students we hope and they your are. questions, please. We've, we've had some reports by email from some highly qualified uh, facilitators up in northeastern Thailand and southern Thailand who are bringing groups together and following right along beside us. And so I, I'm sorry that we're not able to talk to them and you welcome their reports a group and get a microphone so close to them. Do as Richard suggests. Yes. Uh, from the hotel, we have the... Um, Representative of a group, maybe we'll talk this is, to you. This kind of activity is, is challenging. We'll, we'll give morning. people time to work through it and get a good foundation morning. for us here. Good morning. And this is Paul Vipalansi from Mr. Malata Light School, Bangkok. Uh, the reading that I would like to teach is about William Shakespeare. Okay. So uh, the question that when the student read already, I have three questions to ask the student. The first question is, what is he famous for? And the second, where was he born? And the third is, he's the famous critic. That's all from my group. Thank you. Very good. You did a lot of work in a very short time. So, okay, what is, let's take what about two more minutes. Person, then we're going to ask um, a group from the each one of the born. sites to Excellent. give us Those an example exactly of exactly the kinds of fact-finding questions you would expect and your students and your questions look please. for in, in any sort of basic biography. Right. They're usually um, knowledge-based questions: who, what, where, when, why, sometimes how, how much. Okay. Good. All right. Let's hear from the other group. Facilitators, can you identify a group and get a microphone close to them? Yes. Uh, from the hotel, we have the um, a representative of a group that Hello. we report to you. Hello. 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 Um, Leslie morning. and Cynthia. Um, morning. Hello. Uh, Good morning. So the first one is from a Dan Wari. So the uh, uh, reading that I would like to teach is about William Shakespeare. Hi, I'm um, Miss Wari. So the one from uh, Hoi School. Uh, now I'm teaching in Wang Kai Kamo School too. Right, I have a question that I would like to ask is what's her inspiration to be a doctor? What is he famous for? Kun Ying Hon Tip is the famous doctor in our country now because she helped the, the disaster is tsunami the in the south of Thailand. So I would like to ask her that what's her inspiration to be a doctor? Very good. You did a That's lot of work in a very me. short time. So what is what is the famous person famous for? Okay, so Where a famous the person born? And what is the doctor's Excellent. inspiration? Those are exactly the kinds of fact finding Again, questions that's a you would WH expect to question, and it's very look applicable for to in, the in any sort of basic level. biography. Right. Excellent. They're usually uh, yeah. knowledge based questions. Do we have one more group to hear from? Where, when, why? Yeah. Sometimes yes. how, okay. how much? Okay. 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 All right, let's hear Captain from the other group. Mark. And uh, for the lower, lower level, maybe we use only a yes no question or all questions. And for the higher level, maybe we use uh, W H question, just like uh, you uh, you listen to the other Hello. group. Okay. Hello. So um, Hello. this Hello. is the personal information. Uh, uh, it and is Cynthia. very easy uh, to check their knowledge from the uh, leading. For my okay. question is, from where he is how old is he? Okay. And so the first one is from a born, where was he born? Where was he born? Something like this. Okay, good. So we have some how and some, some where Hi. questions. Um, Excellent. Yes, and, and again, at this school. level, now the I'm answers are very short usually. Too. And right, if you were to I'll test the student on these items, it would be multiple choice or fill in the blank doctor. and very um, short exams. He's the famous doctor in our country now. Manisa, did you hear from someone at your site? The disaster is in the south of Thailand. Okay. Oh, Darula came live from uh, TOT Bangkok. That's the uh, in our group, we plan for the question is just the same. Okay, the last so a group. famous doctor and what is uh, the like doctor's uh, inspiration? Yes, no question. And again, that's a WH question, question. And it's very right. applicable Who to is the, the most, knowledge base uh, level. famous tennis Excellent. player in Thailand now. Do we have one more group to hear uh, from? What? Yes. 
Yes. Okay. What kind uh, of sport does Paladon play? And, and uh, is he a football the player? Lower level, How old is maybe he? Maybe he used only a yes, no question or a question. <laughs> but and for the uh, level, like maybe that. we use uh, just the same. W S question, just like uh, you. Uh, yes. You listen to hey, the other good. group, yes, okay? Good. Very good so, knowledge-based uh, questions. This is the yes. personnel hey. information. The groups are all right on task. Uh, yes. Okay, it's excellent. It's very easy excellent. to check okay. their knowledge from the Let's leading. move on to the, the my higher order, the critical thinking piece of it then. We're going to yes. take <laughs> that kind of task and try to stretch it now or extend it. Like yes. Okay. So mm. for this activity or activity okay, good. So we have some how and some where like questions. Excellent. Yes, and again, at this level, the answers are very short. Which are the applications? And if you were to analysis, test the student on these items, evaluation, it would be multiple the choice or fill in the blank and very um, short very exam. Very difficult to okay. make questions for. Manisa, did we hear but from someone at your side? But if you can try and come up with some, that would be great. Manisa? But yes. you might think in terms okay. of activities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Activities for uh, students need Bangkok. to produce uh, because, in as you can notice by the keywords, pair, contrast, or analysis, the the last group. <laughs> that would um, involve uh, like, uh, yes, no question and the students producing something question. for the teacher. Who is the okay. most uh, famous okay. tennis player in Thailand now? So are you ready to take, uh, a, take a stab what, at it, give it a try? What kind of sport does Paladon play? And is he a football player? How old is he? Where does he live? <laughs> 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 Hey, good. That's great. Uh, very good uh, knowledge-based questions. Yes. Yes. Okay. The groups are all right on task. Yes. Okay, excellent. excellent. Okay. Well, let's move on to the, the higher order, the critical thinking piece of it then. We're going to take that kind of task and try to stretch it or extend it. Okay. So for this activity, or activity two, we would like you to think about the uh, higher levels of the taxonomy which are the application analysis. Okay, while the groups are working, what we'd like to do is, is leave the, the, top three leave the text here the, with the, the information up on the screen and, and encourage you to, to pay attention to, to the verbs for. that you see there. So you see compare, you contrast, some, infer, what if, but you might design, in terms of invent, measure, mm -hmm. recommend, convince, the judge, need to defend. Produce. And again, because, come back to this idea that words, might not be compare, enough just to ask just simple yes, analysis, no, or WH questions. Would, um, what are actual activities or projects, the um, things that you can get the student doing? The and, and I think I detect okay. kind of a, a bit of a paradigm shift here. If I'm asking my students for Sorry, facts or knowledge, I as the teacher, I'm still in control try. of that knowledge. Yes. Yeah. And there's a right and there's a wrong answer. Exactly. There's and I can always a right and wrong. There's always a right and wrong. It's very black and white. As I move more into the synthesizing and anal analysis and evaluation kinds of tasks, the, the control or the focus seems to me to move more toward the student. Yes. A, a critical thinking classroom has a very student-centered classroom. And we'll t I will talk or address that in a few minutes, too. But the burden of learning or the burden of thinking go, shifts to the student at this point, and that's why these three, the top three levels on the taxonomy, shift away from direct questions and are more product or activity-oriented processes. Okay, so let's see what you can kind of think of it as a brainstorm. Okay, what are the groups working what we'd like to take so another five minutes leave and the, go back to your group. Leave the text and here the, with the, the information up, up on the screen and, and encourage you to, to pay attention to the verbs that you see there. So you can compare, contrast, infer, what if, design, invent, measure, recommend, convince, judge, defend. And again, come back to this idea that it might not be enough just to ask just simple yes, no, or WH questions. What are actual activities or projects, um, things that you can get the student doing? And, and I think I detect kind of a, a bit of a paradigm shift here. If I'm asking my students for facts or knowledge, I as the teacher, I'm still in control of that knowledge. Yes. Yeah. And there's a right and there's a wrong answer. Exactly. There's and I always can a break. right and wrong. There's always a right and wrong. It's very black and white. As I move more into these synthesizing and anal analysis and evaluation kinds of tasks, the, the control or the focus seems to me to move more toward the student. Yes. This is yeah. 
a critical thinking classroom has a very student centered classroom and we'll t I will talk or address that in a few minutes too but the burden of learning and the burden of thinking go shifts to the student at this point and that's why these three the top three levels on the taxonomy shift away from direct questions and are more product or activity oriented processes. Okay, so let's see what you can kind of think of it as a brainstorming, a kind of brainstorming session. Take another five minutes and go back to your groups and see what you can come up with. Leslie? Yes. Yeah. Mm, might be useful to have a little bit of an example. Uh, we came up with a quick one that might help some okay. of the other sites, if you don't mind, just for thinking. Yeah, let's do that. Let's bounce some ideas around. Sure. While let's hear yours. Working. For example, one group had uh, the tennis, very famous tennis star, Paradorn. Uh, Good. From the fact, it was reading his, the matches. When he won, he lost. He won, he won, he lost. How many times did he win? How many times did he lose? Fact, information. Then, okay. based on that, do you think he's a good player? Or judgment or evaluation. What can you say about Peridorn, given how many times he won and how many times he lost? Is he a good player, a bad player? What do you think he should do? Should he, you know, he needs to practice more. He need, those are the kind of things you can get from the facts. How many times he won, how many times he lost. I think, is that the kind of activity we're looking for? Exactly, so you might put yourself in the position of giving advice. You know, pretend that you're this person's coach. What would you advise him or her to do differently? Um, you, you might turn it into sort of a, a research platform. So how do you know he's good or bad? Obviously, you're having to also compare him to other tennis players also, so you're bringing in outside information. Yes, exactly. So any kind of com contrasting, comparing, and evaluation about his um, tennis career, and maybe even go as far as future. Predicting what, or... What could be expected from him in the future? Do the sites want more time to work on this, or shall we continue exchanging ideas? Do you want anybody want a little more time? Do you have the idea? Maybe another minute. Okay, a couple more minutes, and also for Kun Sarada and Kun Manisa. Thank you.
Okay, good. Kun Sarada and Kun Munisa, can you have your groups wrap up as well, please? Yes, yeah. <coughs> okay, Cindy and I would both like to iterate. This is not an easy process. Most of us as educators are not accustomed to thinking along these lines or, or having to uh, adapt our materials. These kinds of activities are typically not in your books. When you do your textbook analysis, you will not find them there, which means you have to understand where you're trying to go with them and then come up with them on your own. Competitive, so, you are Asian. Um, this is another reason why we want to do this in two sessions, to give you some time in between to practice and then come back in February. But let's check in with the site. Kun, Kun Richard, do you have another yeah. example you'd like to share? Yes, we do. Uh, go ahead, uh, so, uh, Sushada. Excellent. Yep, and the mic. I'm, I'm Judith Arnold, and um, we're in Bangkok, Thailand. I work with EFL here. Judith, just a minute. Can you hear Judith on that mic? Could you speak up a little bit, just a little louder? Yes, I can speak up a little bit. Um, my name Thank is you. Judith Arnold, and I'm uh, speaking from Bangkok, Thailand, from the TESOL conference. And I work with EFL here. And our, our team chose uh, Bird McIntyre, who is a famous pop singer in Thailand. Mm -hmm. And we, we peeled off levels, because the first level were obvious things, like what is he famous for? Uh, what, does he, what is he known for? And then we went down to another app, uh, to the application and we calculated well, how many types of songs does he sing? Does he sing pop songs? Does he sing loop tune songs? Does he sing folk songs? Does he sing romantic songs? So we calculated. Then we went down and we illustrated. And we thought, well, we illustrate his characteristics. And we went down to another le level. And again, that came into classifying. And then we analysis, uh, analysis comparing him with other singers and contrasting him. And the inference is that uh, his personal life and his impact on the society in his musical uh, type of, of uh, productions, and things, et cetera, et cetera. OK, good. Good, so we had um, com composing, we had illustrating, we had comparing, we had inferring. Um, we might even try to project uh, his, his singing career and where it's, where it's going from here. Excellent. The students are really processing information and analyzing it rather than just locating and answering questions. Right. We have this, we have this idiom. Do you know the idiom spoon feeding? Yes. Sort of spoon feeding information. They're not being spoon fed the information. They're having to come up with it and process it and then talk about it right. and explain it and defend their decisions or their evaluations. And they're, they're in the English classroom, then they're being required to use language rather right. than just answer the teacher with one or two words. They're, they are required to construct meaningful communication to talk about, in this case, a very public figure. And maybe a fun figure for them. If it's yes. a popular singer, all the better, mm -hmm. somebody that they're actually interested in. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay, good. Can we hear from um, Kun Manisa? Can we oh, hear we from you? Do you have an example sorry. you'd like you to share? Uh, Leslie, before we go to uh, TOT, yes. there was a burning issue for somebody else had one more comment. Is that right, Sushada? Oh, excellent. I'm sorry. Yep, yeah, this is the last one from uh, Queen's Park. All right. Um, in our group, we don't uh, use that textbook, but uh, we think about the uh, two uh, important person in the world. Uh, one is uh, President George Bush, and the other is um, President Chinawat. Uh, for the question, the first question, we ask the student to think of uh, to compare mm -hmm. to compare the personality. Oh, yeah. oh good. We ask uh, the students to compare the personality of uh, President Bush and Thaksin Chinawan. And the second question is uh, if uh, Bush were the Prime Minister of Thailand, what would his policy oh, about Thailand? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if Thaksin wow. Chinawan is the President of America, and what would his policy? Yeah. America. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. That's, uh, this is a question from our group. Okay. Wow. Excellent. Yeah, that's really part of the critical process, thinking about how things would be different if you move the information around. Mm -hmm. and, and this is part of the 
critical thinking society for the future is they'll look at a piece of information from a variety of per perspectives. What if this? What if that? What happens if I do this? Before making a decision or implementing new procedures or new rules. Yeah. And this idea of looking at it through someone else's eyes, too. So you have a famous figure. You know, what is the world or what does that person look like through their partner's eyes, through their children's eyes, through their pet's eyes? through yeah, this multiple lenses or multiple mm -hmm. perspectives. And in the affective domain, there are a lot of questions of this nature. Imagine yourself as this person. What values are these, are these people showing? Are these good values or values that uh, conflict with your own, et cetera? So those are very good questions you came up with in a really great activity. I think they cheated. I think they've done this before. <laughs> very impressive, very impressive. Okay. Are we ready then to move on to Kun Manisa's group? Uh, yeah. Kun Manisa, are you there? Hello. Uh, hello. From TOT. Bangkok. Uh, the, the last time to our group to talked about uh, Mr. Taksin Chinawat, our Prime Minister. And our group created a com comprehension question. Uh, our question is: that What do you think of taxing Chinawat policy? What do you think? What do you think of the policy of taxing Chinawat in Thai Lak Thai Party? Or maybe we can uh, set the question: How is how is different? How is different between the policies of? Taksin Chinawat and Banjat Bantatan Democracy Party. So, uh, because we, we want uh, our group want to compare compare the policy the policies of the two the two maybe two uh many other party in Thailand and the student I think that the student can think of uh, their policy thank you okay yes well comparing um, political parties and what if political parties agreed on this issue or disagreed on another issue or um, how what would happen if you only had one political party, or there are many directions you can go with that topic. It's very good. Yeah. Uh, I've even seen examples in classes where students uh, took on the role models and yes. did simulations or debates. Yes. And uh, you know, what what if I were that political person? And you know, what what would I be saying? And under these conditions, and and to look at previous decisions or mm -hmm. um, policies that have been implemented, and what were the advantages or disadvantages of them? what could have been changed or what would have been different if things had been decided in another um, avenue or another way. Yeah. And working with young people, they often have really um, firm beliefs about this. And they, yeah. o they often have you know, sort of burning issues on their minds or, mm -hmm. or hot topics, too. What, what should the pol politicians be considering or, or working on and, and why and these sorts of things? So good, good, good topic. OK. How about uh, Hua Hin? How about Kun Sarada? Um, Leslie, so we have a different topic yes. here. It's about mangrove forest, and the teacher is uh, okay. Kunsinina. My school mangrove forest, so I want to and the fo the mangrove forest. Uh, the forest was destroyed, and after that, the reforestation. I want the the, the student to know that mangrove can get many things. The local people and the many things from the, forest, the mangrove forest, and I want to teach the student how to preserve the mangrove forest. Mm -hmm. So, what what kinds of things would you have them do? It's an excellent topic: deforestation, um, environmental kinds of issues, and there's a wealth of information out there. Very hot topic. Mm -hmm. And you can find information on both sides of that topic Absolutely. also. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. What would you have the students do? 
Can you give us one example? Uh, I want I want them to know the good things for the uh, environment and make the uh, give them take them to the mango forest young guide and take to the uh, for the young guide. Okay, good, good. That's an excellent topic and definitely a lot of room there for um, measuring, for judging, for defending multiple points of view, uh, for what ifs, cause effect kinds of things, uh, designs, inventions. Um. And actually, um, a content based unit like that mm -hmm. is wonderful for working or getting up to the upper levels of the taxonomy and having students get really involved in an issue that's relevant to today and to our future. So that's a wonderful topic. Good. Good job from all the groups. Well, we're coming um, close to the end of our time. Yeah. This is definitely a topic we're just getting warmed up with and could go on with. Um, we do plan to come back to this in February, as we've mentioned. Um, Wrapping up. I guess we're at the wrap-up phase here. And, and if we have time, we'll take a couple of questions. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I would just like to say a few things in wrapping up about the teacher and what incorporating critical thinking into your curriculum means. Um, today you had a small taste or sample of analyzing and adapting a text textbook materials. And you can imagine that this is very time consuming and usually when teachers begin a process like this, they have a lot of collaboration and working together. Um, you also need, um, will find a need for developing activities that elicit higher order critical thinking skills. Like you might have to rearrange your classroom to have a lot more group work, um, a lot more activities where students are producing products such as uh, posters, um, dramas, dramas and music, making videos. Yeah, bringing things in from the outside. Yes, they need, there's a lot more flexibility in the classroom. It's a very non-traditional classroom where students are working together and they have control of the pacing and the content of their project and their learning. Another real challenge is finding appropriate assessment. Most educational institutions, including most in the United States, are test driven. Um, we test our students once or twice every year and basically at the lower level of the taxonomy on knowledge and comprehension skills. But for we need to find appropriate assessment. How are you going to know that the, that the students are using their critical thinking skills? What can they do to demonstrate to the teacher and to the administrators that they are becoming better thinkers and are learning? Um, I think in future presentations, Leslie is bringing in more um, other speakers about this issue of how to assess students in non-traditional ways. And of course, there's many sites on the web that deals with, deal with this issue. But finally, I'd like to say that as English teachers, um, if, if we have the opportunity to incorporate critical thinking skills and activities in our language activities, we will be doing a great service to our students. Because we will not only be teaching them English for functions, but also we will be teaching them English for really communicative person, purposes so that they can express their ideas and exchange ideas with others and so that they will become responsible citizens and so that they will be more marketable in the workforce and have more versatility. Critical thinking is really important for our students and to be able to do that in multi-languages would be a wonderful thing. Okay. All right. I'd um, like to let you know once again, um, much much of the information that Cindy talked about in detail here today and lots and lots of examples are in the readings that we've posted already on the web. 
Um, if you have communication with your facilitators, with Kun Manisa, with uh, Kun Sorada, and you'd like to request some other specific kinds of information, we'd be happy to round that up and post that on the website as well. Um, we do encourage you to go back to those readings. There were a lot of readings this time, so right. we'll be spreading them over the two sessions. Um, please pay particular attention to uh, a couple of them, the uh, taxonomy of, of Socratic questioning, and there's a very nice strategy list um, as well. But, but do look at the, the Bloom's taxonomy readings as also. They, they give a lot of examples of, of specific projects and activities in the classroom. Yes. How are we doing on time, Richard? Do we want to take a question or two, or where, th where are we at with that? Quick sum up? I think Narapron will do a quick sum up, and then maybe one or two questions, and we'll be closing. Okay, that sounds good. I'm going to put the uh, website up on my end while you're doing that. อาจารย์ก็สรุปว่านะคะเอ่อการที่จะทําเอ่อพัฒนาทักษะคุริคูลทิ้งให้กับเด็กเอ่อประอีกประเด็นหนึ่งที่อาจารย์บอกว่าที่เราจะต้องคิดก็คือ appropriate assessment นะคะการประเมินผลทําอย่างไรเราถึงจะประเมินผลให้เหมาะสมนะคะปกติเราก็จะมีประเมินผลในลักษณะเอ่อปกติของเราที่เป็นตอบคําถามเป็นมาทู
for the beginning students, not the high school, not the university level. I'm talking about the beginning stage of learning English students. Is it clear to you then? Okay. Would you repeat the question? Yeah. Go ahead. So essentially what your question is, is you're working with students at very, very low levels. How can you introduce uh, critical thinking in an EFL classroom when you're studying very basic kinds of English constructions and vocabulary? Is that right? That's correct. 100% correct. Okay. Okay, good. All right. Go, Cindy. Well, <laughs> it, it is a challenge, but um, one thing you can do um, is give these students the opportunity to express their ideas about the subject or whatever language pieces you are studying in nonverbal form. Perhaps they could create collages or do artistic things or act out the dialogue more. It is very difficult when they're at a limited language ability. But also we have to remember that in many situations the student comprehends much more than they can produce. So a lot of story reading to students and getting them to think about the story from different perspectives. In a foreign language classroom, maybe you would read the story in English, but discuss those higher level questions in the native language to get them thinking about thinking critically. Even though they're thinking critically in the native language, the input is still mostly in English. And this fits really well. Um, if you were present at last month's um, video conference, oh no, I'm sorry, the very first one with Sarah Klinghammer, where she talked about working with very low level students with TPR mm -hmm. storytelling. And she, she advocated the use of bilingual or, right. or translated uh, classroom activities at times just for this very reason and to get students imagining multiple points of view within the story, um, taking on different characterizations, uh, perhaps not always verbalizing that but as you say through um, acting out themselves or through um, illustrations. She even used uh, pu puppeteering, um, that kind of thing. So. And we've also discussed with, for example, high school students whose English is still somewhat limited or, and, for example, working with computer simulations, very complex and uh, subjects that require a lot of analytical thinking. To discuss and, and work on it maybe in their native language, but the products that they produce would be in English. Or even the kinds of websites or the resources that they work with. So I've seen... Um, we just talked about in another class I taught today about some very sophisticated cause-effect kinds of modeling, mm -hmm. uh, multimedia modeling kinds of resources. So um, I'm a pilot. I'm trying to land right. a plane at Bangkok Airport, and there's a wonderful website. Pick an airport anywhere in the world. The English that's required is very, very limited. Mm -hmm. But you keep trying to land this airplane on these different runways, you know, and you know, if you're me, you don't, you don't make it very often. Right. And so the language that I'm using to express that may not be particularly sophisticated, but I'm doing a lot of comparing and adjusting and evaluating and cause-effect kinds of thinking in my head. And um, eventually I can get to that point with the language as well. Right. I think working in really limited domains um, helps with that. So giving the appropriate vocabulary support mm -hmm. um, in advance and as you go along. Um, you, can, you can be systematic or deliberate about those things as well. And so the importance of that is they're learning the process of critical thinking. And if, um, if that's across the curriculum, across mm -hmm. content areas, eventually the, the process of critical thinking becomes a natural part of their education and of their life their daily activities. Right, not just in the English classroom. Right. I, ideally, this kind of curriculum change happens not just in one class in one part of the school, but that it would sort of catch fire and take root in, you know, in math, in science, in social studies, right. in, in your other subject areas Yeah, the as studies well. show that the, the best results are gotten when all teachers are involved, not just the English teachers or not just the history teachers, but all teachers are working on the same systems. Okay. I think we have time for one more question, maybe. Um, Leslie, we have additional comments from Ho Hin. Excuse me, may I ask something? Uh, I have got the idea about uh, teach the weak student uh, to uh, about the differences or uh, similarity uh, to for two words. For example, tiger and bubble. 
okay? And then we have got the guide question for them, uh, like uh, about the size, the color, like this. So the, the weak student, they can compare, uh, they can uh, identify the same or differences between two animals. Start from easy one and then more complex for the higher one. Or maybe you have got um, like uh, the word four words, for example, orange, okay, and um, uh, maybe cucumber, um, horse, something like this, and let them uh, identify which one is different and tell the reason why. So we can create just only a, t a little bit for the, the weak student, okay. And I do agree with you about uh, sometimes we should translate uh, something to the weak student. Let them uh, have got the uh, confidence to think and to present their idea. And after that, uh, when they, they grown up and they have got more knowledge, they can uh, speak out or write in English. And also uh, at my school, um, we used the, the news from the newspaper and we ask the question, uh, like uh, their opinion for every day. <coughs> so the students have got chance to uh, express their idea. And I think uh, we need time to, to encourage them. Like, thank you very much. Those are excellent strategies for dealing with students who have low ling English abilities and scaffolding, helping them and, and supporting them as they are learning the language. That's wonderful. I, I like that uh, idea of individualization too, yes. accommodating both the, the weaker and the stronger students in the class. Thank you for those wonderful closing comments. Yes. Are we, are we ready to wrap things up then? Kun Richard, or where are we with things at this yep. point? Uh, yep, it's lunchtime, and uh, we'll be, be closing now. Um, you okay, want to well afterwards? I think we'll s let's uh, thank thank you guys, and uh, then uh, Kun Airport will do a, a short uh, Thai summary and wrap up and say see you next time. Want to thank? A fruitful presentation and thought-provoking session for us all today. Thank you very much. ขอสรุปนิดนึงนะคะจะมากิจกรรมคราวนี้ก็ว่าจะเป็นประโยชน์กับอาจารย์ทุกๆท่านในทุกๆไซต์นะคะรวมทั้งในทุกโรงเรีย